welcome to Rana's Radar. I've made it to Detroit. I know so many of you told me that I had to come here. The Autorama, this is the big one, and I'm glad I have. The doors have literally opened, I think, about an hour ago, but as you can see behind me, place is packed. And as soon as I walked in, beautiful 55 convertible. I haven't seen a convertible, a 55 convertible, but this is just absolutely stunning. I'm gonna have a chat with Mike and get some more details on this stunning build. Mike, how's it going? Hey, fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> this is just brilliant. Thank you so much. It's absolutely brilliant. You were telling me that there was just a lot of rot. We started off with a, a typical 55 convertible there that uh, it was original, but as a convertible as you and I were talking, convertibles are notorious for rust, which if it's not taken care of in this early, early days or yeah. stages, the rust then turns into rot. And so we knew we could save the car, but it took a tremendous amount of work. So quarter panels have been replaced, floor pans have been replaced, uh, uh, truck pans have been replaced, just a typical convertible rot. Typical convertible rot. Now for those that don't know, and even myself, why do the convertibles rot so easily? Well, there's no seal seams there with a convertible there. They've just notorious for the water to come down instead of being a hard top. The convertible's always had the, the gaps in the areas where the water can run, and once the water gets down behind the panels, yeah. it has nowhere to escape at that point. Where did you find it? This car, car came from actually Alabama years ago. Okay. And the 55 are great cars. Were you looking for the 55? We do try. Our, our, our specialty is 55s, 56s, and 57s. Mm -hmm. We just knew for this particular build, the 55 just seems like it's got a little bit more curb appeal for, for a high-end resto mod build there like this. Well, you can say that again. Mike, why don't we get right up close to the car and um, start at the engine and you can show me all the build that's been happening. Yes, ma'am. I'll follow you. Is it best to go in or should we... We, I, we can go in if that's all right with you. Just be very careful there. We Absolutely. Got a lot of stuff, a lot of I do love your stand set up. Can we just comment on that? Mm -hmm. I mean... It's been done so well, and I love that you've got the full mirrors. Yes. There's no panels, there's no just side mirrors. You've yep. got the full mirrors. That, and your name was, I'm sorry? Rana. Rana. <clears throat> Rana, on that idea of what you were saying, Rana, that was our whole aspect and our whole primary part of the build was, as you see, anything on this entire car that has a hinge on it, Yeah. anything that will move or open is open. Then we knew under, underneath that we had to spend countless countless hours and days and months underneath the car we did not want to take away from the mechanical aspect of the car by putting a pan underneath yep. it. so we took it and we broke every individual piece down piece by piece by piece wow. and as you can see Rhonda we did our very best that there's no two colors the same no. touching each other no. which shows the attention to detail which shows then the mechanical ability of the car itself and so we just tried to very detail the car over the top underneath. You've done that so well, so it looks just as good underneath as it does on top. Yes, ma'am. We, <laughs> we believe so. Yes, ma'am. All right. So why don't we go under the hood first okay. because there's a lot of chrome, there's lights. It looks beautiful. Let me show you guys first. Wow, look at that block, and what have you got there? Rhonda, this was a difficult part of this build right here. We knew we wanted to have to have attempt to, to compete for the grade eight and the Riddler. We knew we needed to do something different. So from the windshield post forward, we handcrafted everything by hand. We took, we wanted the car to look like it was completely boltless there. So we handcrafted all the inner aprons, no bolts, everything's welded on solid on this car wow. now. And, and you do that all by hand? Yes, ma'am. And then as you can see through here, Rhonda, everything that had a need and a purpose, we took it, it took our time and sculpted everything into where it was just very, very sanitary inside. Wow. This is just amazing. It's absolutely flawless. It's absolutely flawless. And you got what you achieved, boltless. 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 <laughs> as you can see through here, Rhonda, on a typical Tri-5, Right through here on both sides, Rhonda. These inner aprons on an on original Tri-5 or a tri, any Tri-5 would have bolts yes, for two would. separated pieces. Yep. From here forward all the way down, we dissected everything, cut and rebuilt everything and welded this front end solid here. So we lost wow. all our adjustments at that point. That 
once we decided to weld, we had no adjustment to get the hoods on, so it had to be precise. Wow. <clears throat> How long was the entire build? We got about 8,000 hours in it, the three of us. Nice. About a year and three months. Nice. This is just stunning. And you've got the filter here. Excuse me? You've got the filter here. I haven't yes. seen this one before. We, we see a lot of people that they run the, the air intake filter inside the motor compartment, which never has made sense to us because it needs fresh air to come in. So we designed everything, even our radiator hoses, our air intake tube is all handmade out of aluminum and then polished. We decided that just fit really well, so we sculpted everything into where it looked like there was a place and a purpose for it, Rhonda. And then wow. as we came down through here on the radiator, we handmade all our baffles, all our grills. And then we, this is a very special piece right here, Rhonda. We took this grill and pushed it in about four inches and handmade this entire grill and surround right through here to give it that sunken look. Mike, this is just amazing work. The amount of effort and handwork that has been gone into this, and look at this handwork here, like, wow, yes, that is just amazing. And Rhonda, I, I, not to sound braggadocious or anything like that, to stay very humble, but it's only three of us, three brothers. We do not work off a CNC machine or a computer or a CAD design. We use what God has given us. Nice. Take it from here and allow these hands to build it. So everything you see on this car for most of the parts that we are talking about is hand built and not come off a computer or a CNC machine. It's all hand built. Mike, and that's what we thought the sport should be about, Miss Rhonda. I absolutely love that. Now, you and your two brothers, David is one. David and Kenny. David and Kenny. Yes, ma'am. The three of you have built this all collaboratively together, which I absolutely love. And your passion for cars and classic cars, where does that begin? From birth. From birth. <laughs> Daddy brought us up in it. We raced all for many years, yep. built race cars and raced, and then age caught up to us there, knowing the racing was probably not going to happen much, and we just continued to build cars. Wow. And you all love the Tri-Fives? We specialize in the Tri-Fives, what we grew up in, and it's what we know, and, yep. and we've been very fortunate to be pretty good at it. It's amazing. Three brothers, and you would have all learned this. Dad involved, yep. Dad, Dad has passed. And we pray and hope that Dad's shining down and got a big smile on his face today. Oh, I bet he does. So, I'll put my money on that. Yes, I mean, look at what you guys have built here. So since we are here, why don't we look underneath and yes, you can tell me what's been happened because it looks stunning. As we talked earlier, Rhonda, we knew the attention to detail had to be underneath this car. There's so, so much work. We took the chassis, disassembled the chassis, recreated the chassis, took all the wells, slicked everything off. We wanted everything to almost look like plastic underneath there, Rhonda, like right. fiberglass, and there's no seams anywhere. There isn't. And then as we started that process, we, all use, we always use the analogy, Rhonda, of this. It's like when you get ready to pressure wash a spot in your driveway. Yep. You say, well, I've only got one spot. Let me clean that. Well, as soon as you get done cleaning that one spot, <laughs> The whole driveway looks dirty at that point, so yep. you end up having to do the whole driveway. Yeah, I get that. That's about the best analogy I can use on building a car like this here, is there's never an end to it, Rhonda. It's always something day, 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 minute by minute that you cannot give up on. Everything here is absolutely flawless. Like I said, every nook, every cranny, every bolt. It's, and look at that drivetrain. I mean, that is just brilliant. Rhonda, not, not to interrupt you, but all our suspension bolts, as you can see, we didn't use just regular bolts. We sat there and handmade all our bolts and cap nuts. And everything you handmade all the bolts? Yes, ma'am. Handmade bolts, everybody. That is just, wow. Wow. And all the panels and everything's been redone as well? Yes, ma'am. Right, I'm going to step inside. My shoes are clean because I know how particular everybody is about the stands. But let's just go down to the wheels here because I do like wheels. What Rhonda, you as you can see here, we've got a set of wheels, but we've got chrome caliper, or excuse me, chrome rotors on it. Everything behind it, as you've seen on the underneath shot, is chromed and, and detailed to the highest extent. And we even took the painstaking time of tearing the calipers down, painting them, and then two-toning here the name of the caliper. So that's all two-toned by airbrush by us. Wow. <clears throat> You know, Mike, you tell me that you haven't used so many big machines and stuff, and it's a lot of it has been handmade, but this is still a lot of modern technology that you have incorporated. 
we use the, the, the our whole process, Rhonda, is this here, and I think you picked up on it instantly. We knew building this car here, the body itself was off limits. Yeah. As in, we did not, we, we, we learned that from our public and from our fans. We learned that they appreciate, when you look at this car, you knew it was a 55. Yes. We did not want to get into a portion of, uh, of changing the iconic body lines of the 55 by cutting and chopping. Could have we done it? Absolutely. The public seems they absolutely love taking the 55, doing the changes that we do to it, but they're so subtle that you got to look for it. 100%. But then turn around and put everything now, you're actually sitting down in a 2023 Corvette the way we designed everything. So you got the iconic Americana, <laughs> but you're sitting down in luxury, sexiness, and, 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 and powertrain of, 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 of modern day luxuries. Wow, not have said it better myself. This is just, I mean. Rhonda, we handmade the dash wow. in here. The dash is removable, and so once we decided to cut the dash out, the dashes are welded in from the factory. Once we decided to cut the dash out, Rhonda, we said, well, let's just build it and make our own dash. So we hand built the dash hand-built the console, hand-built the shifter, hand-built all the bezels that you see that are glowing blue inside. And then if you look straight up, Rhonda, what's unique about this car, look at the headliner. We put a suede headliner so it looks like a hard top now. It does, oh, that's what I was looking at. It's a, it, this is a convertible, but it looks like a hard top from underneath. So what happens when you, um, this is a foldable, I'm guessing? Yeah, yep. everything's operational on this car, Rhonda. And here's the craziest, Here's where we went on the limb, probably furthest out of anywhere on this entire build. We put a leather top on this car. A leather top. And we have never, we've been around this for years. We have never ever seen or heard of anybody taking the gamble and putting a leather top on a convertible. So we took the color that we liked inside yeah. and we moved it and said, let's go for it and try it. Don't know if it would work. And I think, in my opinion, it came out phenomenal, Rhonda. It looks just amazing. It looks absolutely amazing. And underneath it, it looks like a hard top. Yes, ma'am. And you were able, you did that, you custom made. Yes, ma'am. We used Earl Pusco out of South Florida to help us with our interior. And they sat there and just knocked it out of the ballpark, Rhonda. Wow. <clears throat> Three brothers, how did you decide on the color scheme? That was a fight between three brothers because... I knew there had to be something. <laughs> we, we were pretty good on design. We're pretty good on paint. We're yeah. pretty good on, on ingenuity, yeah. which way we want to go. When it gets to this... Of course, because that's the small things that everybody likes. Everyone's got unique tastes. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so, in all honesty, the biggest help on the interior was our three wives. Nice. They just had a better eye for the color of interior to go... With ladies the usually do. They did. I'm going to say that. Ladies usually do. <laughs> and they knocked it. I think they, between the three wives, they knocked it out of the ballpark to go with the color that we designed on the car. <laughs> when you three couldn't decide. And they did a phenomenal job. Well done to them. And then this one here, Oh, Rhonda. nice. <laughs> It's like, is it an illusion or is it actually going in? Rhonda, I've been having fun with a lot of people this weekend. Okay. They say, today we're selling tickets, bring your bathing suit and jump in <laughs> and go swimming. <laughs> they call that an infinity light that we came up with. To set terms. And Rhonda, it looks like it goes forever. That's why they call it an infinity light. It's and actually so it's an alive. illusion, but wow. it's very, very, it, it just goes forever and ever and ever. Everybody's been looking around to see where it goes to. It just, it goes. And like I said, it's a play on light mirrors there that we came up with, Rhonda. Look at that. Wow. Wow. This is just... Never seen that before. And then as you can see back here, Rhonda, it, it, it's from one end to the other, from left to right. We have to carry that attention to detail all the way out to where it, it, there's no car left. You guys have done this so well. And is that a motorcycle? No, it's too big for a motorcycle. You just made it smaller. What's that? The gas. On a regular 55, if you remember, on the original square. 55s was a square. So as we sat there and obviously did a lot of quarter panel work on this car due to the rot, 
we decided we definitely didn't like the square look. So we redesigned this, made a circle of hat, and turned around and used some modern day technology that's inside for the pillar neck and everything, Rhonda, just to give it that modern day look. Love the design. It's that small things that is just. That's another thing. There, there's so many changes on this car, Rhonda, we could talk for hours. Every piece of side molding and trim that you see on this car has been handmade by hands in a pile. These are solid brass. We ordered big stocks of sheets or, or links of brass, came up with the design we wanted, started cutting and started whittling with a hand file, Rhonda. Wow. Love the Chevrolet sign over here, everybody. Look at this. Does not get more show car than this. It's absolutely phenomenal. Everything is just flawless. I love the Tri Fives. I really do. 55 is just a brilliant one to start. And when it's been done up like this, there's not much else to say. Wow. A lot of work, a lot of attention to detail, a lot of handwork. Now, do you guys have a business? We do. Okay. Spotgrass Chevrolet Restorations out of Melbourne, Florida. There you go. Just in case people wanted to know, to get in touch with you, to find Look out about some Facebook, of the stuff. Facebook, all the information from, from what we've built before, mm -hmm. what we are doing today, the show, prior shows, and all the way back for many years of what we've done. Uh, look us up on Facebook, all the information's there. There you go. I appreciate this so much, Mike. Love you. Thank you, you so much thank for you your dear. time. Thank you. And thanks for everybody as well. It's absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much. Love well. it. Well done to the wives on deciding the interior. Absolutely love this. Al was not kidding. I mean, just walking in front of it, the paint alone caught my attention, and then you've got the body style. Bruce, how's it going? Good. You know, I'm so happy to be here. It's the second year in a row that we're competing for a Riddler, and we got our fingers crossed that we'll get a second Riddler. I mean, what's better than that? You know, we're at what's the, better than that? the Super Bowl twice. <laughs> That's what I have heard. Yeah. Everybody told me I had to be here. This oh, is the yeah. Super Bowl. Yeah. Congratulations for 2022. You got Riddler of the Year for the 69th Autorama in Detroit. How was that and what car was that for? That was a 31 Chevy um, that had numerous you know, modifications, one-off stuff. You know, everything we did to that car was something that's never been done before. Okay. You know, we, between the turbos and the engine and just the multi uh, fabrication. Because this things. is a tough competition. Oh, the it's Riddler. Tough. It's yeah, the toughest. Is, it's the toughest in the world. So uh, it's an honor to be here. You know, I feel well, blessed. Well, I'm so happy. Thank you so much. It's an honor You're to welcome. have you here on my channel. What have you got with us here for 2023? Well, glad you like it. <laughs> so tell us, what have you got? Well, I mean, you know, this car, um, you know, we started by chopping the roof. You got to chop, chop the roof. And we lean these posts forward, you know. You gotta chop a mer. You always yeah. chop the mer. That's yeah. what I was told. Yes, yes. But when you chop, you chop the roof. It starts looking thick. You know these cars are known to be looking thick. Yes. But at the same time, I added the stripe to break it up, and it kind of, kind of equals it out. That's you what know? it is. Yeah. 1950s Mercury, everybody. You know, as I was walking by, I could tell there was something happening here. Obviously, these have been chopped, and you can tell they do stand out. And then it's like there's something different. It's not just the big, fat end here. It's yes. been broken up, yes. and you've done that so well. You've got this groove here. Yeah, now that's, that's like the factory body line for Merck, so we yeah. don't want to change that. You know, we're trying to stay traditional, but modernized. But you you've know. made it stand out with the pinstriping. Uh, yes, yes, and we try to make it 3D where it, it stops, and it looks like it's going over and under and coming out. And, wow. And then, of course, we try to match it with the underbody, with the way the underbody is done with the panels with the orange flowing through there that goes up into the motor compartment wow this is absolutely brilliant now the skirts have also been chopped 
Well, actually, there's no skirts, but what we did is we brought all the wheel wells down. Okay. You know, the front and the back. We just brought them down and eliminated the skirts. We wanted to see the wheel. And why not? They are absolutely stunning. What wheels do you have? What wheels do you have? These are uh, one-off um, blade cotton to wheels. And why the 50s Merc for this year's competition? You could uh, have well, done any car. What? Yes, yes. There's never been a 50 Mercs custom that competed for the Riddler. Okay. We wanted to compete with something different. And plus, that's what the owner brought us. <laughs> <laughs> There's always that. <laughs> Before we go and look at that block, can I see the interiors? Yes, yes. Uh, we're going to have to walk around. Let's wait. Let me get the popper. Sure. Hey, Luigi, can you hit the popper? Okay, so door poppers, of course. Yes. State of the art. Look at this interior. Wow. I love the gold console in the middle, and it's actually carried through all the way to the back as well. Yeah, we try to uh, bring the color in and flow it through. You know, you can, it's almost like a waterfall. It really is. And what have you got in the middle up there? Oh, this is a drink holder? Yeah, we got the wow. air ride and uh, the window switches there, you know, wow. and then of course a nice glove box. And there is an overhead console. Wow, this is just with brilliant. With the Merc in the back, kind of finished with the modern touch. I am so excited. I mean, to see then, of this if quality. If you catch the Maximus on the door sill, that's the name of the car, Maximus. Maximus, nice. You know, Bruce, I see the difference. I really do see the difference. Um, you guys have to see it as well in the video because just the way things have been done, the way it just flows, it's absolutely seamless. Well, I'm glad you like it. Thank you. Inside and outside, it's absolutely seamless. Thank you. Look over here. Wow. Now, of course, the great eight has to be complete with the block. What block do you have here? Say that again. What? The great eight. You have to have a good engine oh, as well. Oh, yes, yes. This is a Coyote engine that uh, has been all smoothed out and the same color as the outside. And then the heads were polished and all, all the pulleys up front were polished, you know, with a, a Borla electronic fuel injection with custom covers on top with the Mercury emblems. And, of course, there you see the paint that matches the underside. And we also got some air vents. You know, the round ones on the side to let air out, and then, of course, the custom ones on top. And then the little two pockets up front are to get to the water and uh, to fill the power steering. Wow. It's been made, customized, just perfectly to fit that block. Yes, It's yes. been molded for that. It fits like a glove. It fits like a glove. There's no need for any other extra space. It's absolutely brilliant. And I love the front end. I was looking yeah, at... We, uh, we hand-formed the grill. Th yep. And then it's got uh, the little air spoiler on the bottom that's all chrome. And these are actually Mercedes headlights that we grafted in. Nice. Now, I was admiring the front end. I was like, there's a lot happening here as well, everybody. Now, the paint color, what do you call this? Is it well, root this beer? is uh, actually a Bruce Harvey special, I guess you could say. But, okay. Uh, you know, I started with a black base and I got a bunch of different under bases over that and then there's a tint and it was orange there's an orange tint over the rest of that so it's a really complicated you know step-by-step -step paint process but uh, and very difficult because you got to make sure that uh, all your metallics and everything on the under bases are mm. perfectly laid out you know when I put the silver and gold underneath over the black you kind of like missed it until you can still see a little bit black through it yes. and then that's how you get it to flop yes hundred percent Wow, absolutely brilliant. Let's have a look here in towards the back. You want to go to the back of the car? Right. Yeah, why not? Okay. Yeah, go ahead, <laughs> absolutely there. loving the 1950s Merc here, everybody. Nice Just to meet wanted you. to Good get luck. that. So I guess you can see how where the exhaust comes out, which looks really cool. It comes out on a 45. Have not seen that before, and it's so flush. It's sitting right with the body line. This is beautiful. Right. And we hand-grafted the taillights that are right around the corner that uh, 
They're kind of hidden until you put them on. If I hit the brake light, you'll see it. Must be these. No. It must be the circles here, the brake lights. Yeah. Oh, did, did it okay. break? Did it come on? No. Oh. That's all right, but it's these ones here. Oh, here I can. Oh, yep. 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 Look at that. That is wow. All right. So how is that possible? I mean, I don't see a light. I don't see a oh, cover uh, or anything. Yeah, everything's it's... sunken in, and then we got like a lens grafted in the car. You know, so, so you That's really all. don't see it. That's all. You know, you nice say it as though. Look. Yeah, it's very clean. It is very clean. Wow. It's brilliant. This is amazing, Bruce. This is absolutely amazing. I appreciate it. Well, thank you. All I the best. It. All the best. Thank you. Thank Glad you. you like it. Oh, I do. This is the future. This is the future. All right, everybody, I am here again with the Great Eight, and I saw this beautiful Mustang earlier before, and I was like, all right, I have to find out what's going on with it because it is sleek. There is so much happening here. It looks absolutely stunning, and of course, it's one of the top Great Eights here at the Autorama in Detroit. But everybody, just have a good look. This is what drew me. These seats here, love it. King Coyote is what it is called. So how are you doing today? Real good, how are you? Good, first of all, congratulations for being in the Great Eight. It is an honor. Usually cars of this nature aren't chosen at this type of a show. Uh, to our knowledge, it's the first time a Mustang II has been done to this level. And uh, the whole crew, the team, the builder, the designers, we're all very proud of what we've been able to accomplish. Wow, so that says a lot. So prior to yourself, a Mustang has not been part of the Great Eight. I don't believe this year build okay. of a Mustang, this being year. a 78 King Cobra, transferred into a King Coyote. King Coyote, okay, yep. <laughs> and that's why, because you've done so much to it, it's put that benchmark there now. The modifications the skill of the labor, the unusual characteristics of the car are kind of almost like a what if it would still be built in a modern era. Yep. The Mustang II sold a lot of cars but wasn't really a beautiful or loved Mustang. It's okay. kind of one of the hated Mustangs. Oh. So we wanted to bring some features into this specific car that really were reminiscent of the original car. Okay, sorry about that. No, I understand. Where'd you drop off at? Now, the modifications that's been done to this is very different. And that's what it says, brought it here into the Great Eight. Now, let's start off with what have you done or what did you start off with? <laughs> well, it ironically was a perfectly original 78 King Cobra. Um, I happen to have two of them. I chose the lesser of the two to do this crazy build <laughs> on. And, uh, Rolling through all the, the parts and pieces that have been done, uh, Art Morrison chassis, Whipple supercharged uh, motor. All right, let's go um, over to the motor, as you tell me, so well everybody else can see. At, and uh, some of the unique features uh, on the motor. Wow. We uh, used actual air intakes that kind of mimic a 68 Camaro hood ornament, but they are flow and function. Wow. Uh, sock valve covers that were custom built for this motor. Uh, try not to use aftermarket parts, all custom build parts. The whole front end grill, the uh, headlight buckets are original in size, but all billet. All the air openings in the air dam are all custom built. The hood's custom built. Uh, the this is just absolutely stunning. You know, you're telling me and you're going on, but you have to appreciate just what you are saying is stunning. It's absolutely stunning. Well, it, it, it fits. The hood actually like functions. Like a glove. 
and it, it, I hate to say it's simplistic, but the whole thought or the, the concept of the thing really flowed together. I mean, all these pans are custom made. The, you know, uh, there is simplistic, and then there is absolutely over the top simplistic, where it looks simple, but it's just amazing. It, well, it wasn't easy to make, but no. it, was, it was simple to think about. Yeah, but even Taking the look. Taking a CAD drawing and turning it into an actual piece is where the artwork comes is that, into play. Is that what you started off with? I think that my contribution to the car is not to that level. Okay. I mean, as the owner, you want to work closely with the right type of builder that gives you the feedback on maybe your suggestion isn't mechanically capable. Yes. Um, the big theory about the car is after we're done showing it, it has to be driven. Nice. It can't be a trailer That's queen. what we want it to hear. It has to be taken down the road. That's what we want to hear. Maybe one day or two it might be mistreated a little bit yep. aggressively, <laughs> but uh, the form and function of the side pipes, you have to look at that too as well. One of the unique things inside the front wheel well is a uh, ventilated port that also matches the honeycomb of the front grille the side panels and the doors and the dash, so you can wow. see the flow through between the header pipe and the side exhaust and the rocker panel, so that's gonna mechanically stay cool, which is super important. The rims are all one-off billet uh, to mimic an original Kelsey Hayes 1967 Magstar wheel on a Shelby, and the steering wheel has the same pattern. We're gonna so it'd go be inside. like a what if Kelsey Hayes was in business today building a more modern rim yeah. with a very narrow spoke. The dark center color inside the rim is uh, mimicking the original uh, wheels as well, which were not offered on this specific model. The oh. scissor door handles are really cool too. I mean, the first iteration the of the handle was made in a 1969 Grand Prix, another non-Ford kind of thing. The sill plates are all custom built. The interior is all custom built. When we get to the other side of the car, the shifter, the key and all three pedals follow the same pattern. Wow. If you turn this way and look towards the roll bar, the three-point harness Shelby-inspired piece is there, which we wanted to uh, represent. Wow. This is just absolutely All hand stitched, stunning. all custom built. Of course. Now, what the back here. Yeah, heavily modified. Heavily and modified. And doors that actually done. close. When you look at the uh, design and build of the original car, there was an actual window here with a vented panel. So, this is an all custom built, custom formed, welded in panel to replace that with the scallops. Some people say this portion of the car or the rear quarter kind of looks like a javelin, and it, it, it does a bit. The rear hatch is all full custom. The original spoiler that was on the car was cut into three pieces and these outer corners were bolted into the rear quarter. So the whole spoiler has been formed. Thunderbird S, Cougar S, sequential turn signals. This is an original 67. And this was your idea to tell the builders that you wanted it to be like this? And all of this was very mutual. Okay. Yeah, it was kind of a hit list of what to do. They brought a lot to the table. I brought a handful of items to the table. Original 67. <laughs> All right, everybody, I had some GoPro technical difficulties, so I'm going to be looking at my camera before the show season fully takes off this summer. But let's continue back here at the Great Eight. Sorry about that, sir. Okay. So the headlights, the sequential headlights, they were original. Yes, sequential taillights were original to Thunderbirds and Cougars, so this is uh, an iteration of that with the uh, different egg crate grill uh, makeup, all custom built, 67 uh, gas cap. Uh, the bottom of the car, or rear of the car, has a Formula One esque diffuser behind the independent suspension. All custom pan, all custom built. So. Wow. Well beyond what this car would have ever dreamed to be in 1978, but brought up to modern standard, modern specs. Now, when you had your vision, were you thinking about the Autorama to build it for it? This car was built specifically for Detroit. Okay. Uh, obviously, the rules are you don't real reveal pictures or yep. descriptions or anything in, of any nature. So this is the first showing of the car. It is scheduled to go to a couple of different shows and after And how this. were you able to keep that as a secret? And I haven't asked this from anybody else before, but 
to be able to not take any pictures and it goes to shops and there's people working there. How do you guys do that? Well, it's a thing called discipline in today's yep. world where everybody has a camera in their pocket. Of course. Uh, you just work on the car and if there's any visitors to the shop, you just, you don't take pictures. You don't take pictures. Yeah, and if you do, you tackle them and you take the phone away from them <laughs> and break it in front of them. There you go, there you go. That'll work as well. Well, in today's world, everything has to be instant, and it's all online, yes. and everybody wants to talk about it and blog about it, so it's becoming harder to do to to not reveal what a car 100%, is. 100%, and especially for yourself as well. I mean, if you're working on something and it's coming along, you'd want to show your friends and loved ones. And That's where the patience come in, comes into play. So, yeah, yeah we, have, we have two more cars coming through, one for next year, and possibly one for the year after that, so. Wow, I'm excited. Yep. I'm excited. I mean, if you pull this, this is just... I can't imagine what you'd be coming up with. Can't talk about it. <laughs> I know, I know. That's why I said I'm just excited. <laughs> now, your seats, one of the things that I loved about this coming here is how low the seats were. Well, we wanted to make it comfortable, and you'll see the center armrest and the door armrests are level. So as you're sitting through the car driving, with it being a six-gear car, you want to be comfortable as you're shifting through. Right, I love the pistol shifter as well. It's absolutely one of my favorites. Again, the shifter, kind of pistol grip, Mopar-esque. Mm -hmm. The center key placement and the pedals are all custom built and all match each other. Look at that. This is just brilliant. Let me turn on the dash and light that up for you so you can get a shot of that. I am loving this Coyote. I'm absolutely loving it. And that's where the key fob is. Yep. Isn't that fascinating? It's the things that you do that are so different that haven't been done before that makes you stand out. Yeah, we really wanted to, you know, break out some new interesting things, both interior, exterior, body mods, motor, grills, lighting. Uh, it, this type of car, just to our knowledge, has not been done to this level. Very excited to, to launch this vehicle here. And the black you've chosen as well, along with the like. Can I just the patterns here, like? Yeah, custom built sill plates. Wow. Uh, having my name etched on it might be a bit of overkill, but. Uh, <laughs> nice. Where? Oh, there it is. Yes. Yep. On the valve covers as well. Well, why not, George? It's yours, and you're proud of it. You've been so patient. It looks absolutely amazing. Own it. Why not? I'm loving the black. Is there anything to the paint that you can tell me? Uh, anybody that paints knows black is the hardest color to do. Yes. It's all about the preparation, metal work. Big effort. Big effort. Big the graphic effort. on the hood, which will be hard for you to see in this shoot, is something people need to see in person. So, oh, we can see that. Amazing. Look at that, George. Look at that. Yeah. Is that a spider? What am I looking at? That is the cobra. That's the cobra. Okay. That's all over the hood and we are shooting it a little backwards. But, uh, yeah. Kind of mimicking what the original detail would be, but in a more modern fashion. It's so subtle. It's ghosted. It's ghosted. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, it is the cobra. Okay, yeah. Now, George, what's your background when it comes to cars? I started collecting cars 35 years ago. I currently own 191 cars. You have 191 cars? Yeah, a lot of people have a lot more. I pride the fact that all my cars can run and drive and are insured and go down yep. the road competently and enjoy driving all of them as much as possible. So. so are you a Mopar guy? I'm a big fan of everything. I have a lot of Fords. I have Mopars. I have some foreign cars, kind of some old school Cadillacs, just kind of a big broad mix of a lot of things. That's absolutely brilliant. I appreciate your time so much. Thank you for showing this and good luck tomorrow. Thank you so much. We were overjoyed to make the grade eight with this vehicle and bring it here to Detroit. I bet you're going to be driving this well. I will. <laughs> Thank you so much.